future I see. Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I'm thankful for where I am today. I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I'm thankful for where I am today. I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I'm thankful for where I am today. I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. One more time. Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful for where I am today. I see you do it. I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. 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 Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful for where I am today. I see you, I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. I have a future. Lord, I'm grateful. I have a future. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm for the future I see Lord I'm grateful for the future I see your future is secured your future is secured in Jesus name take your seat in this present hallelujah to Jesus we love him 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 Awesome. Bring that volume of the keyboard down, please. We started something last Sunday on what I titled When a Voice Becomes an Echo. When a Voice Becomes an Echo. And our reading was from First Kings. We read, we read from verse 1. We skipped some verses and we landed in verse 13. So in this service, I'd like to continue 
in the same vein, the Bible started last Sunday. The, the background of the story is that there was a young prophet who was led by the Lord. And that prophet went into a place and cried against the altar. While he cried against the altar, the Bible said the king stretched his hand to kill him. And the king's hand withered. And we saw the story of how the prophet died. The prophet started with so much fire in his bones. He started with a very strong grace upon his life. But he ended up being killed by an animal. And I explained to us that one of the greatest problems in Christianity is what? Consistency. We live in a generation where people start well, but they begin to nosedive. A generation where people, you hear about somebody, they say this person used to be wealthy before, but now the person has crashed. Even in Christianity, you hear about people who were once on fire. Either when they got into school, they got corrupted, the fire dropped, or either they started a business and they lost the fire. So we live in a generation where one of the reasons or one of the things Christians need to pray for is what I call staying power. Power to stay flowing. Power to stay on fire. Power to stay without being corrupted. Because as you move on in life, you begin to see certain things that tell you this does not matter, that does not matter. And I spoke to us some, years, some months back that in it doesn't matter, there are what? There are a dozen matters. If you are not careful, your past becomes better than your present. But that's not your portion. And I explained to us a few things. Uh, and I said to us, the first thing I discovered from that scripture is that when God sends you, he backs you. God sent the man, as soon as the man gave a prophetic word, they stretched their hand at the man and the hand withered. And I said to us, when God sends you, he backs you. When the man discovered that his hand withered, the man of God prayed and his hand was restored. And the man came to the man of God and said, please, 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 come to my house and eat. And I explained to us that when an enemy suddenly becomes a friend, do what? watch out watch out watch out when an enemy suddenly becomes a friend watch out i explained to us that the first man said to him who was the king he said come to my house and eat the man said no i will not obey you the prophet came and the prophet said god told me you should come and eat why did all of them or both of them emphasize on eating it's because that was his weakness his appetite was just his weakness and i said to us that your weakness is what your limitation now i like us to Take from verse 20, 1 Kings chapter 13. We'll continue on the part, part B of it in this second service. Um, we'll skip some verses, but we'll start from verse 20, 1 Kings 13. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried. Hello? And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus said the Lord, for as much as thou art disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, be but camest back, and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place where, of which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him for him the ass to wait for the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way. And the lion standing by the carcass, they came and told, the city, told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet had brought him back from the way he heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord had delivered him unto the lion, which had torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake. 28, he went and found, it, he went and found his carcass cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took, took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. When he laid his carcass in his own grave, they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my what? Alas. And I'd like to continue that this morning that consistency is what sponsors longevity. Consistency is a product of continuous intimacy. If you must be consistent with God, then you must daily be intimate with him. 
Consistency is a function of deliberate discipline. If you want to be a Christian that will continually be on fire, then you must have some deliberate principles that guide your life. The day you let go of principle, you become an old material. When a man wants to remain current with God, then such a man must live on deliberate, consistent principles. I prophesy upon your life that your yesterday will not be better than your today. I prophesy upon your life that your today will not be better than your tomorrow. The Bible says in Job chapter 8 and verse 7, he said, though thy beginning was small, thy latter end shall greatly increase. Agar chapter 2 and verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Genesis 26 and verse 13, the man waxed great and grew and went forward until he became very great. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Ghost, anything that wants to make you small, anything Thing that wants to make you regret anything that wants to make you a reproach i prophesy it is grounded Amen. it is grounded Amen. it is grounded Amen. it is grounded Amen. lift your one shot fire 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 if you study from verse 20 as soon as the young prophet disobeyed God, are you following the story? And ate. As soon as he disobeyed God and ate, the Bible said, right on the table, there was a switch. There was a switch. Right on the table after eating, there was a switch. The young prophet was the one that had the word of the Lord. But because he disobeyed God, the word of the Lord left his mouth to the old prophet. That means if you mess up, God has a backup. Say that to your neighbor. If you mess up, God has a backup. God gave the young prophet the word. But the young prophet disobeyed God and God took the word. God does not waste time. If as a singer in church, you think you are the best and you become proud, you mess up, God has a backup. If you are the millionaire in the church and because you are rich, all of a sudden you become proud, arrogant, no regard for the pastor, no regard for the pastorate, no regard for the administration. You are in the department, you talk to anybody anyhow because you feel there are certain things you can do and you think nobody can do it. For your information, the beautiful ones are not yet born. There are better people with better grace that will do it well. If you mess up, God has a backup. We live in a generation where many men are crying. Many women are crying. Many people are crying because of what some other people have done to them. Look at ministry today. A young man enters the ministry. Nobody knows him. He's a practical nobody. Comes from the, the father was a farmer. The mother was a, 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 a nobody, you know, societally. Not a nobody as a human being, but societally a nobody. And all of a sudden he becomes a pastor. And the ministry advertises him. He becomes blessed. He becomes known. God uses him. He, a young man, they start calling him daddy, daddy, daddy. He becomes relevant in the ministry. All of a sudden, he starts seeing dreams. I have a vision to open my own. Why didn't you open your own when nobody knew you? You use the ministry as a platform. And you now leave the ministry. You think you will hurt the man. You mess up. God has a backup. There are many general overseers who are weeping. Why? Because of what young men that they invested in, they helped, have done to them. All of a sudden, they start seeing dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, if it's of God, it will be done properly. If it's not done properly, I submit to say it's not of God. You may start it and get members. Listen, mercy is not approval. That God is showing you mercy does not mean he has approved you. Have you not seen people, they will say, if God is not, if God is unhappy with me, why am I being blessed? If God is unhappy with me, why are things working for me? Listen to me, the Bible said the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The fact that, okay, what about politicians that are buying cars? What about killers who are buying houses? Does it mean that God is happy with them? Listen, mercy is not approval. Temper 
ratio of success is not permanent approval from heaven so you must have that understanding very well so many men are crying young ladies that they train as soon as they graduate the young lady starts seeing another dream he said i don't think i can continue and the man is crying i came to tell that man don't cry since that lady has messed up god has a backup you are a young lady you have struggled with a man all of a sudden the man has turned his back on you if he has messed up god in my life i can tell you out of experience i have seen issues and things happen that make me sit down and say hey i don't get disappointed in life why because i know all things work together i'm never disappointed nobody has left this ministry by any capacity and i felt the pain nobody i will only feel the pain if i made you leave why will i feel the pain i'm accountable to god i will feel the pain if you left because another member made you upset I will look for how to settle it. But when you wake up one day and say, God told me, save Johnny. God told me to do something that no problem. Because I know when you mess up, nobody is indispensable. I've tell you, I've tell you, any commission that is divine and current with God, there can never be a vacuum. Some of you look at me now. There are people who, there are children you trained. Your own biological child is now helping people outside and has forgotten you. I can submit to you from scriptures. Don't mind my vocabulary. Your investment is not your investment. Your investment does not determine your investment. Where you invest might not be where you invest. That's the summary of that grammar. Your investment does not mean your investment. Now look at this, look at this scenario. Jesus told, <laughs> Jesus told the mother on the cross, Mary. He said, woman, behold thy son. I was talking of John, a disciple. And said, son, behold thy mother. Woman, behold thy son. For your information, Jesus was not the only biological child of his parents. He had brothers. But on the cross, God said, woman, this one now. So in other words, this one is taking my place. The way I took care of you, the way I took care of you as a mother, put your eyes on this one. He will take care of you. Why didn't Jesus direct the mother to his other brothers who came from the same womb with him? Why didn't Jesus direct the, the mother to the other younger ones? Jesus knew that you gave birth to that child does not mean your source of joy may come from that child. You didn't get that one. It was not his child woman behold thy son son behold thy mother it's not your responsibility what about the other ones we live in a generation where people break people's hearts without pity I've seen people do traditional marriages with people and yet they don't marry them cut weddings and dump them a young man gets a motorbike and works so hard. God, that's 25,000, 50,000, 70,000, 100,000. Pays your fees and is squatting in one room apartment. He can't live up to standard. He struggles and struggles. First year, second year, go for your IT. Third, come back for your HND or your 300 level, 400 level. You get to the camp and you begin to see different things. You must marry him. Many men are weeping. They are hurt. Some, of, some, some people have made some men to go into the flesh. Just to revenge. Young man said to me, he said, God is giving me a revelation to leave my pastor. I said, when did you join? He said, six years ago. I said, what were you before you joined? He said, I had school set. It was in the school, it was in the church. The pastor sponsored you to school. In the church, the pastor made you known. You were nobody before. The pastor took you from the village, advertised you, and he said, now nah, I'm seeing the revelation, and God is telling me that I must leave immediately. And I said to him, you will die immediately. Because if you appear before your time, you disappear. If you appear before your time, you disappear. If you mess up,
Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> There's something I saw in that scripture. Look at me, everybody. Anytime God was talking about the prophet, he calls, him, he calls one old prophet, calls the other man of God. He calls one old prophet, man of God. But when the prophet was now prophesying at the table, the, when the old prophet was prophesying at the table, the Bible called him the prophet. He didn't put old. When anytime he's speaking on that God, he said the prophet. He didn't use old. But when he was in the flesh, he calls him old prophet. Why was he old? He was familiar with God. He knew all the tactics of ministry. Anytime you become too familiar with God, you are outdated. Is it not prayer? We'll pray. People are praying and fasting and gossiping on top. You are an old prophet. Too familiar with God. As I'm talking now, someone is here and in his heart he has planned to steal. He has planned to fight. So no matter what I preach, what is in his mind is there. He is keeping malice. No matter what I say, it is there. You are outdated. When you are too familiar with God, you become what? Outdated. Old prophet. Check anytime he says prophet, because the guy is about to say something right. When he put old, it was not because of his chronological age. But it was because it became, I'm looking for people that when they come into God's presence, they come with the heart of a child. They come with the heart of reference and fear. Once they come into the house of God, there is this fear that engulfs them. They know that they are standing before Yeshua and Mashiach. The glory of his majesty, something overwhelms and envelops them. I'm standing before the multi-breasted, multi-purpose God. The I am that I am. The El Shaddai. The one that laid the beams of his chambers upon the water. Wash upon the wing of the wind as a chariot. Stretch for the heavens as a curtain. Create a barrier between water and land. And say water should not return to land. He sit on the circus of the earth and the source of men as grasshopper. is the monarch of the universe. Yeshua and Mashiach. Lift up your eyes and shout hallelujah. Have you not heard? Have you not known that the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth neither fainted nor is he weary for there's no searching to his understanding he giveth power to the faint the young man may fall the youth may fail but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not go weary they shall walk and not faint you don't serve a dead god you serve a mighty god he's the same yesterday he's the same today he's the same forever when god says yes no man can say no when god lifts you up no man can bring you down god is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side favor is on your side God is on your side. 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 Lift the way, shut it. Yeah. Because of what has been done to them. How many? I pray you will not meet a wrong person in your life. Yeah, you know, in a Friday prayer meeting, I said something about the kinds of women. I said it in the Friday prayer meeting we had. I said it in the Saturday morning marathon service. I said it in the wedding. And I'm saying it today, there are three kinds of women in life. Three. And David married the three of them. David married the three of three. 
The first kind of women are the, the women in the generation of Michal. Michal was the daughter of Saul. And the Bible says that Saul said to David, if you can kill Goliath, I will give you my daughter. The daughter had no choice. Those kind of women who they cajole, easily moved. Family hands them over. Um, you must marry this person. Always instructed what to do. Have no mind of their own. The generation of the Michaels. Then he had a second wife. And the second one was called Ahinoam. Ahinoam was a very quiet woman. She doesn't talk. But what is in her mind is risky. Ahinoam does not talk. She'll be following you like a zombie. But she's a killer. They, they see her as a kind woman. But deep down, her mind is deep. There are people like that. That's why they are just saying they don't talk. They never forgive. They can hold on to things in their mind. And I hear no harm affected, I hear no harm affected David's mentality. Do you know if you remember Usha? There was a man David said. The man ran to David after cursing David. The Bible said he ran to David and said, please forgive me. David said to him, I've forgiven you. He said, nobody should kill him. 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. When David was to die, David caught Solomon and told Solomon everything to do. He now said, this man, don't spare him. When I read that, my heart beats keep. After 40 years, David, you still kept it in your mind. He told the son, this and this you must do. But this guy, he begged me. I forgave him. But when I die, kill him. He was affected by Ahinoam. Ahinoam spirit has entered. People that don't let go. Then there is the third kind of wife, the generations of the Abigail. Abigail was married to a man who was an Ozwa. The man had no, he was a fool. The man had no vision for life. Troublemaker without backing. There are people who go about making trouble. You think somebody's behind them. Nobody's behind them. They will abuse everybody. You look at who is behind them. They say, I want to die. And it becomes a risky for you to fight such people. Am I talking to somebody? Because they have nobody behind them. Abigail saw David. David was a man of vision. Abigail saw the husband, no vision. So Abigail switched. Move from the visionless to the one that has vision. The, the Abigail kind of women are those who see future. There may be no money today, but they are conscious of future. The husband may, have, may live in just a kitchen, but they are conscious of future. We live in a generation where people are short-sighted, short-circuited, and they get trashed and stranded in destiny. I want you to understand something. That God Almighty is too busy to waste his time with a disobedient child. God is looking for vacuums. By the same, he's looking for vessels. But at the same time, God is in a hurry. I preached a message years ago. Jehovah is in a hurry. God says he's in a hurry. If you want to waste time, God dumps you. Am I speaking to somebody right now? I made up my mind years ago. Never to quantify my work with God by the manifestations that I see. My work with God is how much of my life lines up with the word of God. Miracles are not a sign that God is still with a man. Success is not a sign that God is with you. God may turn his back on you and you are still buying cars. But it is the cars that will kill you. God may turn his back on you and you still do a good wedding. But it's that wedding that will make you remember to cry to God. Success and solution is not a sign that God is with a man. Let me shock you. Let me shock you. Balaam. God said to Balaam. Don't curse Israel. But Balaam saw money from Balak. And Balaam said, no, I have to. And guess what happened? The Bible says, as Balaam was going to Israel, not sent by God, he was prophesying. On his way to where God did not send him, he was prophesying accurately. And if you study that prophecy, it was a prophecy of Matthew. He was prophesying about the coming of the Son of God. He was prophesying about the birth of Christ, talking of the last days. And yet he was going to where God did not send him. And he was prophesying accurately. Gifts can deceive, but fruits do not deceive. Gift is a gift. God just gave you. It's a gift. It's not, um, there's no special thing you do. It's just a gift. But fruit has to come when the spirit is in you. It's just a gift. It's just a gift. Somebody can finish from a beer parlor and sing song and be jerking. Not under the influence of the spirit, but under the influence of alcohol. The way the, he nailed that song, murdered the song, and was jerking on top. 
alcohol. Gifts. So anybody, any believer who judges his life based on the gift, I see miracles, I see that that is immaterial. To judge your life based on gift is an unpardonable intrusion. To judge your life based on the giftings of the spirit is, 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 is a dementable gratuition. Is a sacrilegious combustion. Is a lacrimatious fallacy. To judge your, your life based on the giftings of the spirit uh, is an absurdity, an avalanche of malady. You must have that un understanding that God is using you does not mean you are right. I don't know if you know there are people, once the hand of God is upon them, nobody can advise them. Before I came here this morning, somebody gave me a revelation, a revelation that he or she had. I don't know if it's a male or a female, and it was not a good one. It was kind of revelation some pastors would see and say, How dare you! How dare you! The revelation looked like a warning. Listen, if I'm to judge it physically, if I'm to judge that revelation with the eyes of the flesh, I would tell the person, This is not from God. The revelation was that God says, I'm, I'm, I'm too slow in soul winning. God says, I should hurry. Ladies and gentlemen, I travel every week for crusade. If I'm to judge physically, is that prophecy correct? No, but if he says, God, who am I to question? I say, thank you, please pray for me so that I can speed it up. It does not reduce me. It does not matter. I, do, I don't want to judge the prophecy. He said, God, so you should speed it up. God, so you should hurry. That you are too slow in evangelism. I'm going, to two con I'm going to Paris tomorrow. I'm going to two countries next week. I'm, 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 I mean, this year alone, I have this week, month, right? I have six crusades. And somebody said, God said, I should slow down. So long the person said, God said, I don't want to check whether it's real or not real. I am humble enough to say, pray for me. And when the reply landed, pray for me, I saw a response. He said, sir, you mistakenly sent me. He says, I said, it wasn't a mistake. I sent it to you. Pray for me. Let God help me. Is it not better that God says, I'm too slow than God say I will kill you? Which one is better? <laughs> what if prophecy came and said, Thus said the Lord, I will kill you? Do I have a choice? So pray, is this the one God said? Pray for. Arrogance has entered so many people, you can't advise them. You are talking, they are talking. And when you want to learn, you don't teach, you listen. People can't be advised. Among all the friends around me, like about two, three friends I have on earth, there is one of them that I listen to a lot. It doesn't tell me what is happening well. It doesn't tell me you are doing well. It looks at me and tells me where it can be better. It looks at me and tells me what can be corrected. It looks at me and says, man of God, thank God for this anointing upon your life, but please have time for your family. That's somebody talking to me about destiny. Man of God, I thank God for this anointing that's upon your life, but please have time for the church. People need you all over the world, but your church is important. And some of you discover that most times I spend more time during the week. I'm doing Bible study, I'm doing prayer because somebody talked to me. Have time for the church. And, and it has been a blessing to many of you. Why? Because I listen to counsel. You don't listen to counsel, you'll be cancelled. Open your ears well. No matter how gifted you think you are, listen to somebody. Watch me. Can I show you something from the Bible? Ay, labroso. How many of you love the word? You love the word of God. Can I show you something? Look at this two scenario. Pastors, watch this. God said to the man of God, Go, prophesy, don't eat. Huh? God prophesy, go back, don't eat. God told a lion, a lion's duty is to eat flesh. God told the lion, kill the man, don't eat. The lion did not eat. The man eat. So anybody that disobeyed God is less than an animal. Lion did not eat. Man of God ate. Lion do not kill things and leave them. Lions are carnivorous, cannibals, wild. They don't spare flesh. But the lion obeyed God. So anytime you are living a life of disobedience to God, you are less, God sees you less than an animal. 
dog can preserve a, a dog that obeys him than the human being that disobeys him. If they are in the car, the human being and the dog in an accident, the dog will live long and be spared and the human being may die. It sounds very hard, but it's the truth. When you disobey God, you are less. The lion was told, don't eat. The Bible specifies and the lion did not eat. The man did not tear the ass. Why? Because he was working on that divine obedience. I prophesy that thing that triggers and propels you, that thing that instigates you, that motivates you, that stimulates you to disobey God, today it dies from the roots. I say it dies from the roots. Take your seats. Can I go on? In verse 30, the Bible says, After this man, old prophet, have deceived the young prophet. The young prophet was killed by an animal. And the Bible says he came and carried the body and began to cry. Oh, my brother. Alas, my brother. Your brother. And you deceived him to death. Your brother. Watch this. The young prophet died. And the old prophet was the one that came to bury him. Whoever deceives you will outlive you. It's not a prayer. Anybody you allow to deceive you will live longer than you. The young prophet allowed himself to be deceived. When he died, the old prophet was still alive. Some of you are looking at me now. The reason you cannot serve God is because of the young man that brought you to church. It is that his car and his fine face that is deceiving you. When you die, he will still be alive. Some of some young ladies, on the day of their death, is when their boyfriends will repent. The same boyfriend that is not allowing you to serve God, on the day of the burial, might be the day his eyes will be open. But he was the one that stopped you from serving God. Whoever deceives you, outlives you. That woman you are not greeting, she's a devilish woman. I'm keeping malice with her. And because of the malice, you die and go to hell. That day of the death might be the day she will say, Ah! Jesus, have mercy on me. Whoever deceives you, outlives you. In Matthew 27, I believe, if you read from verse 5, the Bible says, after chief priests have deceived Ju Judas, in verse 5, the Bible says, and Judas hung, it didn't say hung, King James say hanged. Hanged. In today's contemporary English, that vocabulary is called a grammatical somersault. That's what they call that in English. An English that does not suit the present way of communication is called a grammatical somersault. Am I speaking to somebody? But it is not. I'll tell you why I said it is not. He said, and Judas hanged himself. That speaks of something. It's a, a vocabulary that was used then that is still applicable now and will be applicable later. If he had said hung himself, it means it happened in the past. When he say hanged, it means it's in, though it's in the present, but it was what happened in the past. And if you do the same thing, it can happen in the future. Do I have students of English here? I think you have to start paying school fees here. <laughs> hanged himself. In verse 5. In verse 6, he said, and they came and collected the pieces of silver. The money that used in wooing him. They came and collected it. The blackberry. That has made you open your legs. When you die in abortion, somebody else will use the blackberry. It's not a prophecy of doom. It's a reality of life. You may say, God forbid, but life permits. That man in your office. That you are busy, a believer, somebody brings fraud to you. You are not ready to stand your ground. Maintain your stand. You compromise, dupe your company. You buy a car, 
when that car has issues and take your life, that person will learn from you. Say, oh, he was a Christian. He was not serious with God. That's why he died. He died. I think it's time for me to be serious. I told myself, I will not allow my premature death draw somebody to Christ. My expiration should not become somebody's revelation. I said my expiration that I expired should not become somebody's inspiration and revelation. Samson refused to leave women alone. Even when he died, women were still existing. That, you know, there are some young people today, once they see a rich man, they are in trouble. Once they see somebody who is blessed, their antenna stand. Their MTM mast is in order. They are trying to accumulate reception. Whoever deceives you, how can you call me your brother and you plan my death? How? Who is your brother? Who is your brother? Matthew chapter 12. Check who your brother is from verse 46. They came to Jesus as he was preaching and they said, Master, your brother and your mother are outside wanting to speak to you. The Bible says, turn to his disciples. He said, who are my brothers? Who is my mother? He that doeth the will of my father. The same is my brother. You are not my brother. When you plan out to destroy my life, you are not my sister. When you are trying to take my husband from me, you are not my sister. When you gossip and conspire to squander me, the one that does the will of God, the same is my brother. The same is my mother. I prophesy the wrong people around your life. I disconnect you from them. The wrong people around your life. I disconnect you from them. I disconnect you from them. I disconnect you from them. Can I round up? Whoever deceives you. Who is a deceiver? One that disagrees with what God told you directly. That's a deceiver. One that disagrees with what God told you. If it's not what God said, first he says, you are a deceiver. God told the young, the young prophet a word. The old prophet now came in the name of God. He said, and God, John said, say, and I told you last Sunday, I said, the greatest mistake that guy made was he, went, he refused to go back to God. If you say God said, and I hear from that God, let me confirm. But because he, was, he had already started relating with the old prophet, the flesh has entered him. So he was no more current with the spirit of God. I wish I was talking in this house here. <laughs> Anyone that looks at you and says, what is alcohol? What is alcohol? Who told you this is sin? And that's not what the spirit of God inside of you has told you. Somebody met one of our brothers here in a company. The brother comes from Benin. And there were some things they did. They needed to sell some of the company products. And the director would not know. He met the brother. He said, we'll sell these things. Everything is worth about one point something million. And it's three of us. Your share is 350. And the brother said, why my share? Yeah, the company is not aware. The brother said, I don't get involved in things like that. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. He said, I don't get involved in things like that. You people have been doing deals in this office. Have I ever partook? He says, because those monies are small, small ones. This one is a major one. The young man said, I don't get involved in this kind of thing. I don't want it. He put him under pressure. He said, if you don't get out of my office, even if you are senior to me in this company, I'll report you. The guy left. When they all did, they were arrested. This brother stood out. Why? Whoever makes you go contrary to God's word is a deceiver. And a deceiver is a destroyer. A deceiver is a terminator. There's one thing. If you leave, see, if you stay around deceivers for too long, you lose your accurate reasoning. You stop thinking straight. How do I know? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Delilah and Samson were in a room. Hello? Hello? Are you seeing my explanation? Samson and Delilah were in a room. There was a cupboard. The Bible calls it chamber. In the same room. The Philistines were hiding in the chamber. The same room. And they'll be looking for how to kill something. They were in that chamber. The first time, Delilah came and twisted and twisted and did all the catwalk for something. Samson's madubos, quarantine madubos, all of them jerked 
into modular standing. <laughs> All his, his adrenaline began to pump. Ah, Delilah, if you ask me anything, ah, this one, I die here. I die here. I die here. Ask me anything. And Delilah said, What's the secret of your strength? Ladies and gentlemen, when you pick prostitutes or harlots, from what I know about life, they ask you for money, not your strength. Are you a fool? He didn't ask how much are you paying me? What is the secret of your strength? But because of all the strip dancing, Samson Modubula standing was operating on misappropriation, misappropriation frequency. And everything was standing like that. He said, um, tie me with ropes. Watch me. And they tied him with ropes. And guess what Delilah said? The Philistines are upon you. The Philistines came out of the wardrobe. Samson caught the rope and started laughing. The Philistines went back to the wardrobe. Does that make sense? I will kill all of you. He saw them. He caught the rope. He said, look at them. He laughed. They went back into the wardrobe. Second time, if you do this, do this, you'll get me. They wrapped him with dread and fresh locks. Sam said, the Philistines are coming. He said, come out, come and kill him. As soon as they came out, he caught the rope again. He said, ah. He ran inside. They entered the wardrobe again. And one of them now said to her, put pressure on him. I'm not sure you twisted very well. Twist. Twist. You didn't catwalk. Catwalk. There are many Delilahs and Jezebels in the church. Anybody that doesn't work well is a Delilah material. Some people are not, they don't work normal. They work like they have mental problem. Somebody is working and you're asking yourself, what is going on? Moving like an aeroplane that wants to take off. That needs to first go on the runway. Walking and you are twisting. See, that's, see, see, you know, a lady has to walk well now. What is it, sir? From here to here? That's how you are twisting. Your head is responding. <laughs> the head, that's how the head is good. I've not seen people walking like that. They're just twisting. That's even better. Some are worse. That's how they bend their hand like stroke victims. Stroke victims. Is that twist? And they twisted. They were still there. Can you see what sin does? It doesn't think straight. If it was the Samson of before, Samson that killed animals, what, why is he wasting time with human beings? Animal stands on his way, he tears them. Now, human beings were in the cupboard for days. Samson was joking. Why? Once you start living a life of sin, you don't think straight. That was what will make a man that has a duplex. He will leave his wife and his family and go and squat with a girl that is staying off campus in a one room apartment on a foam on the ground with two pots and a stove and a candle and one big lantern. And a, a cushion chair is a locker. Sit on locker, and she has one small padlock. The man is now living like an undergraduate, and he's over fifty. Living, why? His reasoning is gone. A man look at the wife, so pretty. The wife is so honourable. The man abandons. Look for one irresponsible, inconsequential. Wobolistic. <laughs> senses. Sit down. May your senses begin to work well now. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. May your senses begin to work well. You I was I was in I was in Italy the other day. I was in Italy the other day and I was in I was in, uh, what's it called? I was in Torino. They brought us a little bit late. The last night I was ministering, I knew I was going to leave. So I ministered till almost 1 a.m. It was an evening meeting. I kept on prophesying and ministering. And we closed. And they took us. We were driving. 
in the car, I was looking through the street. I could see pretty girls who men need to queue up for standing by the road with their bags at night for men. And I said to my son who was the pastor in the car, I said, you see these ladies? These are the ones that the whole village should gather to witness their traditional marriage. But because of greed and what they want now, because of temporal momentum madness and spurious lackadaisical brainwave, you see people standing on the street for what? For peanuts. One of the young ladies in Spain that got saved was talking with me, weeping and crying. She was weeping and crying. The Holy Spirit spoke to me when I called up my prophet said, pay for her rent, pay for this. And I said, I don't know you, but God said, I should give you this and this and that. And we gave her. And I said, please, they should make sure they follow up that girl to become a member. And at the end, they brought her. And I said, why do you do what you do? She said, survivor. My family, I have to send money home. I have to take up my younger one. I say, keep your mouth shut. Because if you die today, your family will continue. So if you that carry family on the head. My younger ones, my younger ones. You think they love you the way you love them? You love them? My mother, my mother, my mother, my mother. If today you struggle and struggle and struggle and you are not married and your younger one is now married and you could not marry because you are struggling for them, they will still use it against you. One of my family members said to me, Papa, he said, sir, with the way God has blessed you, you know, you should help us based on the level of the blessing. I said, as what? That we struggle together. I said, as what? I travel around the world, no rest. As what? As my fellow struggler? As my fellow hustler? As what? I said, helping you is a choice. He says, I'm not because, you know, I have to pay for my fees, I have to pay my handout, I have to pay my rent, I have to do this one, I have to do that one. He listened like six bills. I said, I'm a man of God. What I owe you is prayer. <laughs> if I now choose to assist you, appreciate it. Many of you looking at me now, your life is messed up because you carry family on your head. I can tell you many young ladies who have carried family on their head and today they are not married. It's the same family that is mocking them. Because she has to do many jobs, many jobs. She met a guy who wanted to marry her. But the guy said, quit your job. I want a housewife. He said, no. If I quit my job, who will train my sister? If I quit my job, who will help my mom? Now, train those ones. They are not married. Now she wants to marry. No man is coming. They are now against her. I said to the lady, I said, keep quiet. Your problem is not family. Some of you discovered that the months you didn't have money, your people at home did not die. Your mother did not die. I wish. Let's close now. Someone. Someone. I must send money home. I must send money home. I must give money to my mother, to my father. I must give money. I must do this. You assist as God blesses. A family member came to me and said something very nice. Wonderful revelation. So I saw you give me two cars. And the day you gave me that car was on a Wednesday. And it looks, that, that revelation resembled this month. It resembled this month. I said, two cars. I said, yes. I said, come. So I check his temperature. <laughs> so this fever is high. This fever is high. I said, you go back and sleep because you didn't see well. Actually, the revelation you saw was that you bought me two cars. You sold into my life. I said, because you didn't see nothing. This your fever is very high. And you have to, you have to be very careful because meningitis, this is how it starts. I've, I've, I've prayed for psychiatric people before. This is how madness starts. So you have to be very, very careful. Don't let people put you under pressure. Live your life easy. Tell somebody, life is easy. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Somebody will say, your mother has seven children. She is sick. You are the one that wants to carry it on your head. 
out of seven. Others are not doing anything. What are you doing? Others cannot assist. What are you doing? Are you the only one that was born? No, this is a reality of life. Oh. I don't preach Hebrew and Greek. I'm a life coach. I'm a life coach. Every time they know money enters your hand, that's when they bring bill. Towards the end of the month. Why would they wait for the end of the month? Salary has come. Everyone is sick. Everyone is sick. A young man said to me, he said, his mother is sick. I said, bring him for prayer. He said, my mother does not believe in prayer. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to take her to the hospital. I said, what's wrong with her? He said, stomach. I said, Agbo, give her Agbo. <laughs> Which hospital? West Spain. I'm thinking of flying abroad. What happened to Rob? What happened to Metoleto? What happened to Alaboku? Aboniki Bam. In case you don't know. You want to show that you have money. Waste pain, you fly your mother abroad. Stomach pain, you take her to heaven. You want to prove, you want to show, and you start putting your hand, dipping your hand in, in, in wrong things, wrong measures to get money. Am I talking to somebody here? I didn't tell you this. I was on the phone yesterday and somebody was asking for some money. And I was, I was writing, so I put the phone on speaker. My first daughter was by my side. And I put the phone on speaker. The person said, please, I need money for this. I need money for that. And I shouted, there's no money. <laughs> my daughter shouted, it's not true, there's money. <laughs> I said, oh, keep, keep quiet, where's the money? He said, daddy, you have money. I said, you know what I said? I said, there's no money for this problem. Eh, ah, Okay. Okay, because I saw money just now. <laughs> and I said, anytime I'm on the phone, just fly out from that place. <laughs> it was so spontaneous. I said, there's no money. Ah, Daddy, say there's money. The person said, who is that? I said, it's not your business. It's me you should listen to. This one doesn't know anything. This particular thing you want, there's no money for it. Ah, ah, Daddy, there is money. And I told her, I put up, I said, who told you to say that? I said, Daddy, but I saw money just now. I said, for this issue, as when you have money, you budget it for something. He said, okay. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody here? Don't put yourself under pressure. Plan your life. Number three. Are you ready? Please, listen. You know, we live in a generation of extremism. Once people hear something, they will carry it to extreme. Oh, they say they should not wear earrings. Oh, so everybody will not bob their hair. And begin. You know, extreme. They don't check the revelation behind what was said. I'm going to talk on that later. Extremism. Because now, some people will say, hey, Papa, thank you. Oh, they say, me will not they say, money go village again. No. <laughs> no, no, I, no, how many of you know that's what some people will hear from this message? He hey, said, we should help our... So once a younger brother called, he said, I want... Money. I should face my life. Oh, pastor, say I should face my life. <laughs> Your mom called you. Your mom said they have to pay rent. Hey, mommy, leave me. Oh, my life. Oh, my life. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, do not inconvenience yourself. Go outside due process. What is corruption? Corruption is avoidance of due process. When you avoid due process, that's corruption. Do not go outside your strength to assist anybody. Do you understand the limit? Number three, watch me. Watch me. I like this one. When I actually saw it, I was running around my room. My wife didn't know why I was running around. She said, are you okay? I said, don't worry. There's something I've seen. The Bible says, when this guy died, his body was preserved. A lion was standing by him. An ass was standing by him. The ass, domestic animal. The lion, carnivorous animal. What was their duty? To preserve the body. Why was their body preserved? 